what are other things that I do to make up a public speech on the spot and, and, and give that an, an extra little oomph? Of course, a lot of it is trained behavior for me, um, but this is something that you can use too. After you use your internal gut check, um, if you don't get your gut talking, then breathe and try again. And if not, then logically come up with it. You know, it's all worse comes to worse. If you still then have time, then think about the emotion that you want your audience to have and, and attempt for yourself to go into that emotion first before you speak. That requires you to know how to quickly shift your emotion, which I believe someone who is not in NLP trained may have a hard time doing. Um, but if you're interested in NLP training and learning how to quickly shift your own emotions and that of your audience or clients, coaching clients, uh, employees, whatever, then um, look us up. We train here uh, on Bali. I just finished the training here. Um, we train in Mexico, Los Angeles, Miami, Amsterdam, sometimes other places too. So, uh, and we have a great online training in Joshua Tree as well, where you can learn how to do this. And anyway, so um, the, the, the emotion, I need to get into that so I can give that to my audience. But in storytelling, there is something very simple that you can do to take something, a speech from here to here. If you tell a story, then use the pivotal trick or tool that great storytellers use. When you think about someone like Tolkien of the Lord of the Rings, or a cinematography storyteller like um, uh, like uh, 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 Steven Spielberg, um, they use the same tool to kind of trick the brain into believing that you're somewhere else, that you're another place in the world, maybe even another place in time, maybe in a completely fantasy world. And that means that when you tell a story, when you describe a location, that you must use visual information, auditory information, kinesthetic information, and if it's suitable, also olfactory or gustatory information, smell and taste, or smellatory and tastatory. So for instance, if I want to describe this, this jungle that I'm standing in right now, and, and don't, feel, don't think I'm on a jungle trekking right now, it is early in the morning, which is why I look like shit. But I just actually got out of bed and I have a super nice villa with a private pool and all that good stuff. But I'm in the jungle right now. Um, so you describe, for instance, this location. When I look around over here, I see many different colors of green and brown. I see tropical trees and plants and flowers all around me. I can hear the crickets very loudly. And in the distance, I can, I can hear some other birds. I think it's in a, either an owl or maybe it's, a, I don't know, a dove. I have no idea. But I could make that part of my story. I feel uh, the dampness of the jungle on, on my skin. It's a, it's a comfortable temperature. Um, and I, um, I smell uh, a fresh smell that I usually only smell in like essential oils. I don't know what it is, but it's almost a, a sweet flowery smell with some earthy tone to it. And so, you know, that's how I can describe visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory, how you can just lift your storytelling. And with that, your speech uh, uh, your speech telling, your speech giving, your public speech, you can actually bring it from here to here. So that's my little tip. See you around.